What plugins do you add in your vocal chain? What is the order of plugins that you do? How do you process your vocals? How do you process the lead vocals? These are the common questions that I always get under my comments for all my YouTube videos. And today I'm going to exactly show you what plugins I have used for the lead vocals in my recent song called as Reasons. Just note that the plugins that I have used for this lead vocals may not be applicable the same way you use it also because it depends on the genre, it depends on the singer and a lot of other factors. But you can have a look at my way of approaching a lead vocal track and you can learn some tips from this as well. I'm Florina Jane, otherwise known as Flow of Music and I put out videos on music production on a regular basis. So do subscribe if you haven't yet. So without any delay, let's get started. So this is the track that we are going to be dealing with. Let's listen to the vocal track without any processing. Cause I've got reasons, I've got reasons to lift my hands. Hmm. Okay, so this is a completely raw track. It was just recorded in this room. So there's a lot of room noise and there's a lot of things that needs to be corrected. Some places are very loud, some places are soft. Let me just show you how I have processed all these things. The first plugin that I have added is a Melodyne plugin. Now this is a third party plugin and this works exactly like a flex pitch that you have on Logic Pro. So once you get all the notes over here, you will be able to fix all the pitch corrections that you have. So any pitch correction you have, maybe slightly she went flat or sharp, whatever it is, you can fix it and it will sound natural. That's the beauty of this plugin called Melodyne. So suppose I feel like that note, maybe not exactly, right? What I will do is, while pressing option, I'll come down or up and fix it. I've got reasons. I've and probably if that went a little drifted away from the actual pitch, I will just use a pitch modulation to bring it there. Got reasons. So that it doesn't drift away a lot. So you have a lot of flexibility with respect to correcting your vocal tracks, especially with Melodyne. So that's what I do first. I have a complete analysis of the track and then any pitch correction, any small changes, I'll fix it using Melodyne manually. I don't do a complete, you know, fix using just one autotune plugin. I always rely on Melodyne. So once I finish that, the next plugin that we're going to look at is a gain plugin. Now, the reason I use this gain plugin is technically to automate the volume that's coming. So let me press the letter A and show you what's happening. So all these lines that you see over here are due to the gain automations that I've done. So I, for example, felt this area was a bit softer, so I increased it. Let our praise to you never cease. Now, because that portion went a bit higher, the singer just moved away from the mic a little bit so that she can have a lot of freedom to sing that. So as a result, the volume became a little less. So I had to increase the volume a bit. And actually, when you see the overall volume itself, I've kept it to around minus 4.2 ish. So instead of moving or automating the fader, I have done it using a gain plugin. So initially it will be in minus 2.8. Moving on, it will go to minus 4.2. So look at this. Lowers down. Technically, the volume automation is happening through this gain plugin. And this is a stock plugin only. You can find it under utility, gain and mono. The reason why I've not done it with the volume fader is because I want to have flexibility with this while mixing as well. See, when I automate using this fader and then later on when I am trying to, you know, put the volume along with the kick drum or whatever or with the other tracks, that time when I want to move the fader, I won't be able to do it because automation is happening there. So to make sure that this is completely free from automation, I used another plugin called as Gain. So that's what's happening. I completely check the track and then wherever I feel like the volume is a bit loud or soft, I change it using the Gain plugin. The next plugin that I have is a Waves Tune plugin. Now you might wonder, I have already done everything using Melodyne. Technically pitch correction has been happened, right? Like I did it manually. So why do you have to use a Waves Tune plugin again? Like this is an Autotune plugin. Why do you need to use this again? So what I have done is first entered the key that the song is in. So C sharp, natural, minor. 
and the correction so meaning if a note or a key that she has sung goes off pitch how much is it going to correct not completely but 70% of it is going to be corrected and how fast will that transition happen is this note transition so 120 milliseconds i never changed any of these settings only this instead of 100 i kept it to 70 this is just to make sure that even after doing stuff manually using the Melodyne plugin, in case there is a note that I accidentally missed, this will make sure not to have that in that off pitch tone. That's it. Okay. So this is like a backup plugin or a plugin that just takes care of the things that I probably missed and all that. So only 70%. The reason is because you do 100% it's going to sound very robotic and you don't want that to happen in your song, right? You want it to be natural. So after adding these three plugins, Cause I've got reasons, I've got reasons to lift my hands. <laughs> now let's go on and do our EQ. So the first one is using a channel EQ and I've done a subtractive EQ. So what do we mean by subtractive EQ? In case you want to learn a lot about EQ and how to handle EQ on different tracks, you can click the link that pops up in the screen right now. And I have explained everything about EQ in that. Basically, subtraction is to eliminate the unwanted noise from a track. So I've only dedicated this EQ for subtracting the unwanted frequencies. So if you actually look at the track without these things. Because I've got reasons. I've got reasons to so I'm getting a lot head. of unwanted low end in this track and I just want to remove all that. So that's why I used a low cut and these two were used so that the humming or the unwanted hum sound from the bass, you know, that unwanted sound, I just wanted to remove that. I wanted a clean vocal. Cause I've got reasons, I've got reasons to lift my hands. Hmm. And the thing is, it was recorded in my house and you can see that my room is not soundproof, right? So there were a lot of additional reverb that came in and a lot of bass sounds that also came in because my room is not treated. That is the reason why I had to compromise on these things because they were just adding some things that I didn't want. So that's the reason I removed that. And the next EQ that I added is a tube EQ. Both these EQs are a stock EQ by the way. So tube EQ, you can get it under EQ, vintage EQ collections and vintage tube EQ. This EQ is dedicated for addition, meaning any frequency that sounds nice to boost that I use this plugin. Why specifically this plugin is because it's model like analog gears. Okay, so when you boost stuff using this particular plugin, you get some color and saturation also added that also gives you quality. So that is the reason why I added Vintage Tube EQ. There is some high boost that I have done. I have increased the high frequencies a bit. So with this, Cause I've got reasons, I've got reasons to lift my hands. Hmm. So many reasons, I've got reasons to do my... So can you hear that saturation added? Like I can clearly sense that the higher frequencies are enhanced a bit more especially in this part so without this so many reasons with this so many reasons i've got reasons to do my dance so just some clarity improvement is happening through this plugin that's why i use this and moving on there's another eq that i added which is a graphic eq i always like this particular plugin because the same thing is happening here also i'm using it only for addition but i've increased some higher frequency elements over here because i like the way the saturation gets added through this plugin so the output model i have selected punchy and the drive is more and look at the change that's happening now Cause I've got reasons, I've got reasons to lift my hands. Hmm. So many reasons, I've got reasons to do my dance. Hmm. I give my praise from my heart to your ears. So a lot of saturation in a good way is added in the track and I like how it's sounding after that. So that's why I chose this. So you don't technically have to use so much of EQ also. So if you feel like just adding one EQ to increase, one EQ to remove stuff is enough, then that's fine. I was just meddling with these things. So if you ask me, is this the same order by which you add plugins for a lead vocal track? No, it might change. But this just gives you some ideas on how to do it. Maybe you have new ideas from watching this YouTube video. 
So that's the basic idea of this video. And after adding all these EQ, because I'm increasing some higher frequencies, you know these S sounds. So these sounds mainly occupy the higher frequency, right? Like when you say S, S that's high frequency. So obviously you're going to naturally increase the S sounds from the vocal track as well. And is that good? No, it's not. Like it is going to be harsh. So that's why you're going to add a DSR plugin. This is again a stock plugin only. So I added a DSR and I used a preset called as female vocal wide band. It's good to have presets and use them, but just tune them for your tracks. That's the only thing. So after adding DSR, two compressors. One is an R comp that comes along with the waves family. This is a ratio that I've done. Attack and release are a bit quicker. Threshold is over here. We'll see how it's happening over here. Because I've got reasons. I've got reasons to lift my hands. Hmm. So it's dynamically fixing the track a little bit. And I've added another compressor. Now this just takes care of some peaks in the song. See? I give my praise from my heart to your ears. Just very little compression is happening through this. Now let's go ahead into the bus track. So the first bus is an exciter, stock plugin only. When you choose a frequency over here, so I have selected 6300 hertz. It means so much of harmonics or saturation or color, whatever you call it, that gets added in this frequency range. And because I'm adding so much of saturation, if I add it directly on the channel strip, then it's gonna be evidently processed, okay? So what I did was added it as a bus track and really increased the harmony. And because of this, again, concept what happens, DSR, you need it because S sounds are going to be increased in volume. So I added another DSR. This is another DSR that comes as part of the Waves family. So I added a DSR and did this. And I didn't want the main signal completely to go through the DSR, just a portion of it. So I have sent around minus 22.9. Cause I've got reasons, I've got reasons to So let's see what happens or what the sound actually looks like when you really crank the volume up. Cause I've got reasons, I've got reasons to lift my hands. So a lot of sizzling sounds and a lot of uh, high frequencies coming, right? So that is what is getting added, but too much of it is not nice. Second bus has a reverb on it and the reverb I have used is Valhalla Room Reverb. This is a third party plugin. And everything is set based on my tempo. So mix, pre-delay, DK. We talked about reverb a couple of videos ago. Have not watched it. Here's a link to it. So you can just go ahead and check that out. So this is a reverb setting that I created. Now I added an EQ plugin after the reverb because I get a lot of low frequencies coming in because of the reverb. Okay, And you don't want your headroom to be occupied in a very unwanted manner. right? So I just removed them using an EQ plugin. So with this added, I'm going to increase the volume and show you. So just a tinge of reverb so that it now sounds like it has some dimension and space to the track. The next bus track is another reverb, but this time this reverb has a longer decay. See, the previous reverb didn't have a longer decay. It only had one second. But here I've kept it to five seconds and the amount sent to this reverb is again less. So we'll listen to how this sounds like. Cause I've got reasons. Let's increase more. Cause I've got reasons. I've got reasons to lift my hands. Hmm. So many reasons. So that extra length of that reverb is added, okay? And it's added in a very subtle manner so that it's not really clear and very monotonous. Neither is it completely inaudible, okay? Like you can in a way hear it. And the next plugin is a very cool plugin. So I have added a delay. So these are the settings that I have done. So I wanted the delay to happen in every quarter note. This is the delay time. And I also added a reverb, which is a chroma verb. Both these are stock plugins under the delay so that the delay doesn't sound exactly like, you know, hello, hello, hello. Not like very raw sounding stuff. It has some dimension to it as well. So that's why I added a reverb to it, but the DK is a bit less. And again, added an EQ and cut out the highs a bit. Now, 
This decay doesn't happen throughout the lead vocals. When I open automation and select another automation that I used, you can see that in only two or three places I've used the decay. So you'll hear it when I play it over here. See. Reasons, I've got reasons to lift my hands. You'll again so hear it here. Reasons, I've got reasons to do my dance. So there are some gaps in your vocal tracks, right? So if you fill them using the delay like this, it's going to sound nice. If you otherwise use it throughout the song, then it's going to be very clashing, right? Like you can't hear the straight vocals at all. So if you look at the entire track only in that chorus section, see even here, it's only in the chorus. So this is what has been done to the delay. But it depends like for this track, this is how I use delay. Maybe for another track, if you use a delay slightly for the entire track, it might sound good as well. This is my approach towards this particular song called Reasons and for this particular vocal tone. Now we listen to a section of the track with all these plugins and without all these plugins. So first we're going to do without any of these plugins. So let me just turn everything off. Reasons. I've got reasons to lift my hands. Hmm. Now with all the plugins. Reasons. I've got reasons to lift my hands. Hmm. Now I'm going to play it with the track. So let me play another section to you. So you understand how the processing is happening, right? And all that I have done over here exactly matched the vibe that I'm going for this song and it really suited well with all the other tracks as well. And this is just the lead vocals. You'll be surprised to see how many vocal tracks I've used here. So whatever you see on the screen right now, from this till this. Yeah, all these things are vocal layers, okay? These are not instruments. Everything is vocal layers. So together, like if you want to hear only the vocal layers, this is what it sounds like. I've got reasons to lift my hands. So many reasons. If you want to look at a video where I explain about these background vocals as well, just comment below. So I hope you got some idea seeing my project and the way I mix the lead vocals for my new song that just released and it's called as Reasons. The vocals was done by Sarah Emmett and it's out on all streaming platforms. You can go ahead, listen to it and let me know what you think about the song, what you think about the mix and mastering and all those things. I hope this was useful. Thank you so much for watching. Never stop learning, keep making music and I'll see you guys in another video.